Hello there, Fanagon Addicts. It's Ken Wilford here at Fan Again. And today I wanted to talk to you about looking for part numbers for your Vanagon parts. You know, one of the frustrating things that you deal with, that I deal with, uh, and you probably have dealt with this many times as well, is when you're trying to get a part for your van and you don't really know what part it is. You know, I've people call me and they say, hey, I, w I need this part. They try to describe it. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to envision in my mind, you know, what they're talking about. Um, and sometimes I can, most of the time I can figure it out. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years, but you know, it would be so much easier if they had the part number, if they had a diagram they could look at, uh, we could talk about it that way. And so, you know, I wanted to let you know that such a thing actually does exist. Um, and, you know, for many, many years, Volt, Volkswagen had a system called ETCA, which was their microfiche system. And then it uh, evolved into a computer-based system. And in order to have access to ETCA, you would have to uh, be a Volkswagen dealership. You would have to subscribe to uh, this system and pay a monthly fee and, and be, but also be a Volkswagen dealer franchise and that kind of thing. And so it kind of kept, you know, the lid on the diagrams and things for the cars. That way, I guess they felt like you had to come to them for parts. Uh, but it was, to me, it was very frustrating. You know, you would call their parts guys. They would be trying to help you. Again, they're stuck looking at diagrams that you can't see and trying to help you figure out what the parts are you need. If they had just opened it up to being able to see these diagrams or have a, a catalog you could buy or something as an end user, you know, I think it would have been a lot more user friendly and they probably would have sold a lot more parts. <laughs> but instead, Volkswagen decided not to do that. And so now we fast forward to 2020 and uh, there's a website that you can look up. It's called OEMEPC.com. You can see it here at the top. I've got it listed. Uh, basically, this is not a Volkswagen sanctioned website. Okay, so OEM is like original equipment manufacturer. EPC is electronic product catalog. Okay, um, and this is actually a Russian site. Okay, so uh, when you go here, I would highly suggest that you do not click on any links whatsoever. Okay, <laughs> you see this stuff in Russian. Completely ignore it. Wait for this page to fully load. When you, you know, come to this site, do not click any links. Okay, because believe me, guys, you don't want whatever these people are selling. But okay, the nice part is you can come here and you can look up. Okay, the the Volkswagen online parts catalog. Okay, so if you go to OEMEPC.com, like I said, be careful. Uh, I have APB uh, Adblock Plus on here, and I still, I used to not get any ads. Now I'm getting a couple for whatever reason. So once you get here, okay, they have this nice picture at the top. It says Volkswagen catalog. They also have an Audi catalog and Skoda and Seat and all that stuff. If you want to look at that, I don't know why you would. But anyway, uh, unless you're an Audi person. Uh, scroll down to this section here. Okay, so this is your country of origin. Uh, usually, Europe is like auto selected. I always click USA, and you can see it's changing what options you have down below. Uh, so if you have the USA thing selected, now you can select your vehicle. So for me, I usually come here. You can see there's a thing for Vanagon. There's a thing for Vanagon Synchro. There's a thing for Type Two. That's for the bus. They have a thing for the Eurovan. And then they also have a thing for Camp Mobile. Okay, so part of getting around the Volkswagen microfiche and the Volkswagen Edka and this site is to try to you have to use it. Okay, because it's not always super intuitive where the stuff is. Okay, so once you're here, say you you want to look up Westy parts. Okay, you'd be clicking on the Camp Mobile. Uh, if you want to look up just regular Vanagon mechanical parts, you would click Vanagon or Vanagon Synchro. If you want to look up bus parts, type you would click Type 2. And if you want to click on Eurovan, that's for the Eurovan. Now, uh, if you have a, a Mexican bus, you would want to click on Mexico as your country, and that would bring up other options. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just throwing that out there. So let's click on Vanagon just for the heck of it. Okay, now we are going to look up parts for our Vanagon. Like I have a 1991 uh, Karat Vanagon. So I'm going to click on 1991. Now again, make sure you wait. Okay, do not click on anything until the page is fully loaded. Because what happens is it'll start loading and you say, oh, here's all the options. You click on, nope, it's this other stuff. All right, so ignore that. So let's go. Now we go online, 1991, Vanagon Parts Catalog for a US, United States market. Okay. I've never used their VIN decoder. I don't know how that works. But, all right. So now we're looking at these little boxes here that you can click on. And, you know, say I want to look up uh, engine bearings. Okay. I want to look up, uh, let's see. I want to look up cylinder heads, okay, for a 2.1 liter Vanagon. So as, as we're scrolling down, okay, uh, you can see little pictures here. Okay, these are your diagrams that you can have access to. Um, the nice part about this site is you can actually right click on the diagrams and like download them as a picture that you could like put on your computer um, and that kind of thing. So that's that's kind of nice. If you wanted to get a diagram, let's click on the cylinder head diagram. Okay, you can see here a nice clear drawing of the cylinder head. The different parts here. We've got the head gasket itself. We've got the metal ring. We've got the rubber O-ring. We've got a cylinder sleeve here. Okay, all these things have numbers next to them. If you click on the number, like say this drain bung, or actually this drain plug here. We'll click on that number 17. Boom, look, it automatically moves to that, okay, over here. So it's very convenient. And then when you uh, see something you want, like say I want to look up the part for number five right here, boom, the head gasket, okay, here it is, okay. Um, it's 025-101-345, okay. Um, it also tells you things, like it says, cylinder head gasket also use this. D0004001, that is actually the glue. That's the part number for the glue. So, you know, you, you have some information here. You have the part number of the part itself. You have what it is and any kind of possible, you know, other things to go along with it. And then you have some information on this side. Okay. Uh, all this stuff is important. Okay. All this stuff is important. Like, let's see this number six. Okay. Right here, number six, this is actually, even though the picture doesn't look like it, this is one of the head nuts that's domed, okay? Here's the part number for it. It says domed cat, cap nut, and it says M10. What does that mean? That means that it's actually a 10 millimeter, like the inside of the nut, the threaded part that we thread on is a 10 millimeter, okay? So you see this information you can get from this. Look at number 17, this, this bolt. Okay, this is your drain bolt in the bottom of your head. So if we click on that, we get the part number right here. It says socket head bolt with hexagon socket head. It's basically an Allen bolt. And it says an M8 by 12. What does that mean? That means it's an M8 bolt. That's a 8 millimeter bolt. Um, and it's got a, it's 12 millimeters long. Okay, so you see again, like say I, I need this bolt. Okay, I can look the part number up for it. But I can also learn what it is and how long it is. And maybe I could go to Home Depot or something and buy it. And I wouldn't have to go, you know, call up Ken at Van again and say, hey, I need this one little tiny bolt. Um, you know, please mail it to me. Uh, yeah, that's not really always a good idea for either one of us. The price of shipping it you would be way easier if you could find this at Home Depot. And now you can because you had the length of it. You have the size of the threaded portion and you can make a guess at what the threads are um spoiler alert they're 1.25 <laughs> okay because anything small on a, a volkswagen is a 1.25 thread pitch like an 8 would be that and anything bigger is going to be like a 1.5 and anything smaller is going to be a 1 okay so you know that's just experience talking but you can kind of figure these things out but sometimes they even tell you the thread pitch on over here okay so now we're going to look at this washer that's between this bolt and this like say you drain it and you like, oh i need a new copper crush ring for that okay here's the part number it says o ring and it's an 8 by 12 okay that means the center hole of it is 8 and the outer edge is 12, 
and you could find one at probably your local hardware store or your local auto parts store or something like that. Um, again, on this, this cylinder head, um, it's showing us, you know, the stud right here. Let's take a look at that. Number nine. Okay. It gives us a partner, but it says threaded pin and it's an M8 by 38. Okay. So again, it's a stud that's 38 millimeters long overall length. Okay. It's an eight millimeter. You know, if you had to try to hunt that down, it's giving you enough information so that you can do that. Okay. So you can see these nice pictures. So again, these pictures with all these numbers, you can right click on it. You can save image as you can, you know, put whatever you want here. You can change the file name and, you know, save it onto your computer. You could print it out. You could email it to someone that's trying to help you, you know, figure out what parts you need. You see how, how much, uh, beneficial this is. Okay. So, um, you know, this is just one example. And so people call me all the time. They're like, Ken, I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that. Uh, I will send them to this website, oemepc.com. And I think it's a big help. Okay. At the very least, if you can look up and find um, a, a picture of the thing that you're looking for, okay, uh, it will help you. And so if you have the part number, when you go ahead and call me, you call, you know, whoever, um, it is going to be a big benefit to you. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. Okay. Again, I had a guy call me a couple of days ago and he said, I really want this breather tower here on top of the engine. Um, so I went on here and looked it up really quickly, got the part number right here. And then he said, Oh no, no, I don't want that. I want the O-ring underneath, you know, trying to stump me. I don't know. So I click on that and here's the partner for that. And here's the size. It's a 63 millimeter diameter and it's four millimeters thick. Okay. So, uh, you could possibly buy that. You know, if you had the dimensions of it, you could go to a website called O-Rings and more, I think that I bought a lot of things from. If you have the dimensions, you can get it from them. Okay. Uh, if you have an emergency or you just need that one little thing. Okay. Uh, there's an O-ring at the base of this oil dipstick tube, number 25. Okay. You click on 25, it takes you to that. It's a 7.3 by 2.4. That means it's the in interior hole is 7.3 and it is 2.4 millimeters thick. Okay. So again, you see that these, uh, being able to look up the parts, you know, look up the diagram, see how they fit together. Uh, look up all these things. It can be very, very, uh, it can be very, very helpful. All right. So let's talk about the part numbers for a few minutes, just so you guys know what you're looking at. Um, when you're looking at an O-ring, you're looking at a bolt, you're looking at a nut. Okay. You can see that a lot of these parts start with the letter N. Okay. Start with N. That is Volkswagen's, uh, letter that they usually start their hardware things with. So in other words, this part is really just like not something super specific to the Vanagon or to the Volkswagen in general. This is like a piece of hardware. Okay. So when you're looking at this nut here, number 12, and it says it's an M8. Okay. That means it's an eight millimeter, uh, on the interior of the nut, the head of it, the head of it is 13 millimeters. Everybody knows that, right? And so it's a hexagon nut. Okay. I could go to a part store and I could say, Hey, I need an M8 nut. Um, again, if it's an M8, it's going to be a 1.25 thread pitch. So most M8 metrics you're going to buy are going to be that already. And you're good to go. Okay. You can go to uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, they would have that hardware available. And so again, it's, it's a kind of a generic piece of hardware that you could pick up somewhere else. Okay. Um, there's another website I've used called Bolt Depot that, um, you know, is a website that you can get bolts from and hardware from if you know the size of it, right? And the length of it, okay? You can easily pick up things and try to get things because, you know, some of these part numbers over here, okay? I mean, I could call the dealership and get this number. It's not in the aftermarket, okay? So this would be a dealer thing. And the dealer is going to 
be like, okay, that's like, you know, $5, $6 or whatever for this little nut. And you could buy it for 25 cents at Home Depot. Okay, so, so again, this learning how to navigate this uh, parts catalog, learning how to read it is going to save you a lot of time and money and frustration. Okay, uh, and so that's why I'm trying to kind of show you that. Okay, so let's go back. We're going to go back to the main thing again. Okay, I just like you have to click back a bunch of times because you clicked over there a bunch of times. All right, let me scroll down a little bit more. All right, so say, you know, you're like, hey, I really want to try to find out where things are. Let me go back again one more time. We'll go back to our list. Okay, uh, you say, you know what? I want to work on the front heater core system. Uh, I really want to do that. Okay, now you're looking at these different titles, engine, fuel exhaust, cooling, gearbox, front axle steering, body, pedals, wheels, brakes, you know, accessory, infotainment, electric, rear axle. Where would you look, right? Where would you look? It's not super obvious. So where you would actually look is in this fuel, exhaust, and cooling. Okay, even though you're looking for things in the heating system of the Vanagon, that is where it's listed. Okay, so in other words, it pays to take some time to look through this catalog, get familiar with how the German people's minds work. Okay, I, I'm assuming because the exhaust system for pretty much most of the time of Volkswagen's existence up to this point had something to do with the heating system of the car, <laughs> that the exhaust system and the heating system are in the same grouping. Because, you know, on the air cooled everything up to this point, the heating system was part of the exhaust system. Of course, in the Vanagon, it's part of the, you know, cooling system. So, you know, that would be a thing, okay? And the crazy part is it says fuel, exhaust, cooling. None of the cooling hoses are in this. You know, this is all has to do with either a, the fuel system, the exhaust system, or the heater, okay? The heater. And I think it does also have the air conditioning. So maybe that's why they're calling it cooling. Uh, but... Again, why is that in here? But so let's look through this. So say you're like, hey, you know what? The heater. Okay, I'm gonna work on my front heater core of my Vanagon. I just need the, the parts and the things. Click on this, you get a nice diagram. It's showing you okay everything. Here's the front heater core, boom, number 23. Here's the part number. It says heat exchanger. Okay. Uh, say I want to replace this hose, okay, number. Uh, actually, it's number nine. You have to be careful. Look at this number twelve. Like, oh, that's the hose. Nope, that's the clamp for the hose. And how you can, how can you tell? Well, here's twelve here. Twelve, twelve, twelve. Okay, a bunch of twelve. There's twelves everywhere. Uh, that's clamps. <laughs> okay, so you have to kind of like look through the the forest to see the trees here. Number nine is this one hose. Okay, this is your feed hose. Uh, the cool part is here's the heater valve. Here's this hose, it goes up, and you can see by the line, it's showing you which one of these two nipple things it hooks onto. Now, you see how much information is on here? There's definitely information. And so, click on number nine, it brings up the hose. There's actually two versions. Oh, what? Two versions? Yep, yep. There's one version, apparently, that was for JX and KY engines. Uh, that is diesels, okay? Diesel and turbo diesel. Uh, then there's another one that just says feed. That's actually for everything else. Okay. Uh, then we look at this other hose over here. Again, we ignore all the 12s and click on this number 10. Okay. That's this hose. And again, we have, it's a return hose. Uh, there's also another version that was out there that was a JX and a KY. A D, this is the diesel. So always look in this extra information over here. This is, you know, if there's multiple versions of it. Okay. You're going to see the main number 10 and another one in parentheses. And then you're going to see information over here to tell you, okay, that's for this engine code or this version of it. And then this one is for everything else because it doesn't have, you know, any kind of information like that model data things on it. Okay. Um, as we look at some of these other hoses, we got number 15 here. Okay. It is, uh, we're looking at this one. So we have two number 15s. If we're looking at a 91 uh, gas Vanagon, okay, this is a return hose. It tells you the length of it, 38, 20 millimeters, okay, so basically 3.8 meters. And it says it's for 
all these different engine codes. Okay, the MV is the one that we would have here in 1991. So you're saying, okay, this is definitely the one I need. It's that long. Okay, uh, so it's going to help you be able to figure this stuff out. Okay, if you need these items, you can, you know, give me that part number, give somebody else that part number, and they're going to be able to be more confident that this is the part that you need. Okay, so let's go out of here again. So again, you know, some of the non-obvious things is that, you know, this thing says cooling, but where is the cooling system parts? It's actually under engine. Okay, so uh, this was one of the first things I did back in the day was make up a diagram on the Vanagon coolant system, uh, hoses and things, because uh, I didn't really like their diagrams. Okay, let's take a look. Coolant, hoses, and pipes. Okay, so again, this is under engines. And you can see there's a lot of information here, but there's also a lot of confusion here. I mean, hoses are going everywhere. There's all kinds of numbers everywhere. It's very jumbled up. It's pretty much a mess. Okay. The only plus side is you can kind of see, okay, here's this big hose that's going, you know, whatever. It goes to number 22 pipe, which is a return. Okay. So sometimes people ask me, hey, you know what? These two pipes here, I don't know which one hooks to what. Okay. Well, guess what? You can see right here, this big one hooks to this 22, which is the return. And then up here at the front, number 16, right? That's the hose that has the 90 degree bend on the end. So you're like, okay, that comes out of the bottom of the radiator. You can see the line, 90 degree bend, goes to this return pipe. You can see a little arrow right here, goes to this big hose that goes to the thermostat housing. Okay. So now you got this free information. Okay. If I have my hoses hooked up correctly, this is how they're hooked up. The other pipe, number 21, okay, this is your feed. This is what comes from the engine. Um, again, it, you have to follow these a little bit confusing line drawings, but number 26 is this hose that's coming out of the coolant distributor, okay, and feeding that, and that goes to the straight hose that goes here, okay. So if you look at this diagram, you can tell, hey, coolant is coming through this line, through the straight hose, into this rat, part of the radiator here, flows through the radiator, comes out the bottom and goes back to the motor. Okay, so you see some of the information you can deduce or get out of these diagrams. I mean, it's like a treasure trove of information. You could sit here, I've looked through these diagrams for thousands of hours, okay, looking up things for people, trying to find parts for them. And so I'm very familiar with it. You're a new person. You've never did this before. You're going to spend a lot of time looking through here and discovering all of the things. You're like, oh, I looked on that picture. There's no thermostat housing. Oh, that's because it's up here above it. Okay, They broke it away from that picture and they made their own little mini diagram with the water pump and all of the hardware things and the thermostat housing, thermostat, thermostat cover, you know, this little side pipe thing. You know, none of that stuff was on that other diagram. So you know, sometimes they break things out. If you don't see it on the main diagram, you know, you have to look around a little bit and see if you can find it. I would say one of the more confusing things on here is this one, gearbox. Okay, gearbox. So you're thinking, okay, gearbox, okay, that means everything to do with the transmission. Okay, let's go on gearbox. Okay, and we will look at that. All right, here we have, you can buy or get part numbers for the actual transmissions themselves, okay? Um, that's great, but you can't get them, so what's the point is that? But, okay, so here we go. Gears and shafts for four-speed manual gearbox. It gives you a nice exploded view of that. I'll zoom in on it so you can see what that's like. You can see all these pieces. It has numbers for everything. You can click on each individual one and get the part number. Try to track, you know, some of this stuff down if you're looking for it. Um, but the frustration part comes into on this when you're dealing with the automatic transmission, okay? So on the automatic, we have a gear housing right here. You click on it, okay? It is showing you some of the pieces of the transmission, okay, on the automatic section, but there's no differential section, okay? Where is that, okay? So let's keep looking. Let's go down and look more. Okay, here is an even more blown up thing 
of the automatic portion of the transmission. Okay, so again, it's broken down even further with all the little pieces and parts inside of the automatic portion, including the torque converter. But where is the differential section? It's not on here. Okay, it's not on here. Then we have this part. Oh, look, here's the valve body things and this other, you know, uh, uh, what is the governor deal and the governor cap and all this other stuff. That's all on here. Oh, boy. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Yep, but where's the differential section? Nowhere to be found, kids. Not on this diagram or the other ones, the other two. Now we're on diagram, what, number three or four? We still haven't got to the differential section? All right, it's got to be here somewhere. Let's keep going down. Nope. I mean, you can go down to the cows come home. It's not here. Okay. So where is it? Well, I'll show you where it is. Rear axle. Okay. Rear axle. Who would have ever think that it would be there? Not me. Originally, I looked and looked and looked and looked. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. Rear axle. Yep. That's where it's at. And you go on rear axle. Here is... You know, some here's the differential section of the automatic transmission with some of the gaskets and seals and things and the cooler and all that stuff. But that's not everything. Okay. Then we go down here. Uh, finally, we get to the differential parts. Okay. Uh, we go get down here to differential or three speed automatic gearbox. It's the very bottom. Because it repeats, okay, after this. And now you can finally see all the differential parts. So you see what I'm saying? You have to get familiar with this uh, and get into the mindset of why they did what they did. I mean, of course, the differential is, and also the manual differential is in here too, by the way. Uh, of course, the differential is part of the rear axle thing, but it's also part of the gearbox. So, you know, you would think, that it would just be in there, okay? Uh, and then one other mind mind meld I will share with you. So we saw in that one, in the Vanagon one, let me go back here, that the air conditioning and heating is in with the, the exhaust, which makes sense to me, okay? I guess, once you get your mind around the idea that, hey, it's because, you know, uh, air-cooled exhaust things in the past. But let's go to the Eurovan. Okay, and let's pick one that's a popular year, 2001, okay, here in the U.S. Um, so we're going to look for the air conditioning parts because I really want to fix my Eurovan air conditioning. I want to get it going and get it get stuff going. So I'm going to go to the exact same thing, the exhaust system. It says exhaust, fuel exhaust, and cooling. All right, cooling. It says cooling. Let's see what we got. Exhaust stuff and things. We got more exhaust stuff and things. Oh, look, here's an air conditioner compressor. Okay. We've got a, a fan. We've got some heating, some heating parts. And that's it. Okay. So just ba like barely any air conditioning stuff or heating stuff. Like barely anything. And you're like, what? Like they just don't have any of that listed? Like what? Why? Okay, and you know, for a while I was freaked out by this. I'm like, you can only get an air conditioner compressor. They don't even break down the rest of the system. Of course they do, but where is it? Okay, if you had to guess, where would you guess? Well, it's in the body section. Okay, it's in the body section. You're you're looking. You know, I looked and looked again, trying to find where is this? Okay, not any place obvious i looked on the engine part i looked here and there if you go to the body section now you're actually going to see you know more broken down things of the heater okay you're going to see more things of the air conditioning system um and it's fully broken down for you in here uh but you have to know where to look okay you have to know where to look so you know for some weird reason they they had a logic trail they were following for um the vanagon and then when it got to the eurovan age the logic trail slipped into another you know another thing and now it's different okay so if you're looking for stuff do not give up okay keep looking and eventually you will find it okay a lot of the uh stuff you're gonna find in here in the air conditioning 
Okay, it just takes time. You have to look through, scroll down, scroll down. Do not give up. You will find it. Okay, eventually. See, here's the whole entire air conditioning system fully broken out with all the hoses and all the other parts and everything. Okay, but it's in a place where you would not expect it to be. And you even have rear air conditioning parts. I mean, everything's here and the heating system as well. All right, so let's go back. So finally, the last thing I want to talk about in the in stuff that we care about would be under Camp Mobile. Okay, Camp Mobile. So again, you have uh, a Westphalia. You're not going to find those parts in those other things. You're going to find it in here. Okay, so we have a 1991 Westie. Okay, we click on that, and we're going to click on Accessories and Infotainment. So that is the only category we have. And as we look through here, we see familiar sights. Okay. We see a front luggage rack, okay, and all the pieces that go with it, and the seals and everything. It's all listed out here for us, okay. Now, there's some other versions of the camper that we never got here. I mean, it's kind of cool in a way to look through and see some of these cool things. Like, here's uh, this other version. This is from a California club van in an Atlantic. They had this basically non-luggage rack, luggage rack, where it's like a front spoiler, reverse spoiler or something. I don't know. But that was in place of this, of the luggage van. Um, some of them had a glass sunroof, okay? Um, some of them had, uh, of course, this is our normal roof that we we would see. Um, some of them had gas-filled struts. Now, it says it was for a joker. Uh, when they went to the Eurovan, they had them as well. Here's your support frame for your Westie completely broken down and as parts okay good luck getting any of this stuff but at least it's here you can see the things and maybe try to look up the part numbers um they have a high roof we never had that here so you know this is where you would look for your westphalia parts as much as you know they would be able to see them uh broken down in the dealer microfiche um, again, the, the Westphalia parts is a whole nother story all to itself um, as far as who designed them, where they came from, and who supported them over the years and all that stuff. It's not who you would think. Okay? It's not who you think. And I'm not going to get into it right now. Maybe we'll save that for another day to talk about the history of the camping camper and the van, Volkswagen camper and how it like kind of culminated into um, the van again. Look, you even in here, which is not where you would expect it to be, in the camping section is the camper version of the rear air conditioning, but just the housing part. Okay, just the housing part. So again, you're not going to see that in the normal air conditioning system where you would expect to see it. Instead, it's in the camping section because it was only used in the Westie. But still, you know, it unless you know where to look, you're never going to find it unless you just look and look and don't stop looking until you find it because it is there. Here is your West Valley kitchen cabinet. Okay, broken down and all the parts and pieces and a couple of different kind of covers that could go on it. Okay. Um and they have that broken down here. Guard plates. This is all for the stove sink thing. They have a couple of different versions of the sink. The gas cooker. All the parts for that. You see so much information is in here. Okay. Um, and so that's why I wanted to bring you along and let you see how to look in here. How to look things up. Uh, the part numbers. Very important. Okay. Write them down. The part numbers are always and except for the end numbers, again, which are uh, hardware, okay? The part numbers are always going to be grouped like this, okay? We have 253-260-399B as in boy, okay? 253, that is what vehicle it goes to, okay? The Vanagon is a 025, 251, 255, and a 253, okay? Uh, so these first three numbers, okay, are usually depicting what vehicle it goes with. The second three numbers is what group it is, okay. So 260 is camper parts. That's one That's one thing of camper parts. There's probably a couple more. 
And then 399 is what number part that is in the camper parts. And then B could be a revision. Okay, so in other words, there might be an A version, there might be a B version, C, D, whatever. Okay. Also, as we look at this other one here, okay, we not only have all those numbers, okay, we also have a 7UK at the end. What's that? That's a color code. Okay, that's a color code. And so when you see the, the extra three things at the end, usually it's a letter or a number and two letters, it'll give you a color, beige gray. Okay, so here's another one. This one here, okay, we see 255. Again, that's Vanagon. 819, okay, and then 951A, O1C. O1C is a color code for black. Okay, color code for black. So, you know, you can even tell somewhat what things are by the numbers okay and as you look through the part numbers of the vanagon you're going to see sometimes a 321 number you're like well a 321 number well guess what that is that is a and you know if you scroll down here you can see it's actually from a, a golf or rabbit okay i think rabbits were 321s and that part is from that okay they shared a parts bin with the other Volkswagens of the era. So you might see a 321, a 351. You know, these are all designating other parts. Sometimes you'll even see um, a 211 or a 021 or a 071 in front of a part number. That is from the bus. Okay, that's from the bus era. And so even though it's from the bus era, they used it on the Vanagon. So they use that designation. All right, so I guess that's it for this quick trip into uh, learning how to use the Volkswagen parts catalog. Okay, Again, if you don't get anything out of this except trying to find what you need, you know, click on it, see the picture. You're like, I don't even know what any of this stuff is, but I, I know I need this particular bolt right here. You know, you right click on this, save image, save it to your computer. And then when you're talking to me, you're talking to somebody else, you can say, hey, I got this picture. I need number 12. Okay. And you can text it to us, email it to us. And we can say, oh, I know exactly what that is. And we can sell it to you. Okay. Even if that's all the farther you go with this. Okay. That is a million times better than trying to explain what it is for like 20 minutes. And then the person doesn't fully understand and they send you the wrong thing and you're you're disappointed okay uh been there done that got the t-shirt okay so that's it for this uh i guess this is going to be tech talk okay even though we are talking about parts but this is going to be tech talk uh if you liked it please like share subscribe if you didn't like it give, if you like give us a thumbs up if you didn't like it give us a thumbs down uh if you have any comments on how it could be better please let us know um under no circumstances click on any of these russian links believe me that's scary okay <laughs> and make sure you have like up-to-date uh virus protection on your computer and stuff because you know i have no idea what any of this other stuff does okay but please like share subscribe and we will see you guys on the next video